What's the word, y'all? All right, man, the Western Conference Finals have officially started. All I'm asking for is eventually we get some fun, like, close games. I would I would argue that this was fun just because Warriors basketball, when it's at its peak, is, like, the most pure version of basketball. There were so many times I was watching this game, and I was like, damn, that was fun. Even though it ended up being a blowout, and it seemed like they had the game from tip-off, um, it still was enjoyable. But I, I do, y'all, I do want to see some close games. So hopefully tomorrow's game between Boston and Miami is either close or the next game in this series is even close i mean dallas just won a series versus the suns where every single one of the games was was a blowout i think the average margin of victory before we even get to the game 730 point blowout was 17 and a half points this is what dallas is is they gonna live and die by the three if they're not shooting well they're gonna lose by 20 if they are shooting well they're gonna win by 20 like the, i don't understand the people that try to overanalyze game ones because it's so hard to tell what the hell you're gonna get from game two to game seven especially when you have some of the most elite coaches i saw the Dallas Mavericks go down 0-2 in their last series. Jason Kidd makes some changes, and boom, they won their series. You know what I'm saying? But I got to give a lot of flowers to the, the uh, Warriors because they did their thing. Let me go ahead and look at my notes. I love the amount of different coverages they threw at Luka Doncic. There was one thing that the Phoenix Suns didn't do uh, last series. They, they pretty much had one singular game plan, and when that game plan did not work, then that was it. But in this one, Steve Kerr threw, I saw boxing one, or what I seem to see as boxing one. Maybe it wasn't, but in those possessions, it felt like a boxing one. There was zone. There was straight up a uh, one on one defense between Wiggins and Luka, and they did such a good job of not allowing them to, to cherry pick matchups, right? And the last series, Luka was like, We want Chris Paul, we want Devin Booker, and I'm gonna give them 40. With the Warriors defense worked so much, so much harder, and they were like, Yeah, you're gonna get some possessions where Steph Curry's guarding Luka, but we're gonna do everything in our power to allow Steph Curry to be guarding whoever we need him to guard. And that was one thing that Reggie Miller was talking about on the broadcast, even though that broadcast the team might not be the best I thought they gave some good insight he was saying that the Mavericks aren't doing a great enough job to get Steph Curry as the primary defender and in my mind I'm watching these games I'm like well that's because the Warriors are not allowing it they're, they're just not allowing it it was just great team defense where the rotations was all great and they were doing everything Wiggins had one of his uh, can I say one of his best defensive performances Wiggins has been a great defender all season long but it's on the main stage now and he's going against Luka who just averaged like 30 something points per game in the last series um um, and turn into Michael Jordan in the game seven. But he he contained Luka, especially when we get to that third quarter. Steph Curry comes out, 10 0 run by the Warriors. He's shimmying and doing some dances and stuff. But it was like back to back possessions where Luka tried to get to the paint and they they cost turnovers. Draymond Green getting the cookie jar. And one thing I like about that play specifically, Draymond Green got the steal and he was on a fast break. Draymond Green, not a guy that normally looks to score often. And I, he kind of got the Kenny Beecham syndrome. I hate being on fast breaks by myself because there's so much pressure. And though a layup is the easiest shot in basketball, if you miss that layup, you'd laugh at stock. But he passed it to Klay Thompson, who at that point had zero points. And that got Klay Thompson going. Even though he only hit one three on the day, they got him going. He was hitting turnaround, fadeaway, mid-range jump shots. And sometimes you just need to see that ball go in. And Draymond Green just dissing it off to Klay Thompson for an easy layup on a fast break. Helped that a lot. But man, J Jason Kidd got to figure it out, man. I, like, I, like I said, this Dallas Mavericks team was down 2-0 in their last series. So they know how to fight back this the saying goes the series is not started into a home team loses and uh so far in the conference in both the conference finals the home team is won so it is what it is Kevon Looney deserves another MVP award just like he, he uh deserved to get in the last series the last game of the last series because I thought he did a very good job there's a lot of times where in order to prevent Steph Curry from being the one that was guarding Luka Doncic it was Kevon Looney and I was like do we like this matchup more than Steph Curry and the answer was yes it was like the slow footedness of Luka being countered by the slow footedness of Kevon Looney we felt like every time Kevon Looney was guarding Luka Doncic it was like step back three attempt and he made a few of them um Jalen Brunson made a few of them as well maybe not threes but just overall jump shots when Kevon Looney was switched on to him but Kevon Looney was playing some really good defense in space versus the better ball handlers on this team so thumbs up to Kevon Looney they used to talk about on the broadcast that he looked dead tired out there and he did and I was like y'all up by 22 points at this point he, he can, can you get him two three minutes of rest you got some other, the mind you be a litter, you know, Jonathan Kaminga, because at this point, uh, w one of the other reasons other than the um, the Dallas Mavericks losing the three-point game or just shooting terribly was the rebounds. In the last series, they pretty much won the rebound battle every single game versus the Suns. And that was one thing I remember talking about in the, the pseudo uh, preview that we did at the end of the Warrior series. I was saying that the Dallas Mavericks are a good rebounding team. So I wonder how the Golden State Warriors are rebounding against them because Dallas had won the rebound battle in every 
every single game in their previous series. And in this one, the Warriors dominated the glass and dominated the paint. Total rebounds is 46 to 58 by double digits. Steph Curry led all rebounders <laughs> with 12. And, and this allowed them to get out and run a little bit. It was the good old Russell Westbrook thing. We're like, we know Steven Adams can average like 12 rebounds a game in those years in OKC, but we were okay with letting Russell Westbrook get the rebounds because of course he was chasing history, but also that means our offense starts immediately because we don't waste one and a half seconds trying to outlet it to our guard. Now Steph Curry got it and we could just straight up run. And this is what happened when you got Kevon Looney on a switch with, with Luka Doncic. And that was one of the reasons why the, the Boston Celt no, not the Boston <laughs> Luka Doncic and the Mavericks rebound the ball so well in the previous series is that like Luka would toy with the opposing big man and now they can't go out and rebound with the Warriors turned into a great team rebounding team. You know what I'm saying? That allowed Wiggins to go out there and get some boards. Draymond Green was elected. He was great today. He was flexing. He got an air one. Air one. Um, the defense from him and Wiggins and Kevon Looney was elite today. And if you continue to get that, it's going to be a hard series for the Dallas Mavericks. But like I said, man, this, this Warriors team is the purest version of basketball imaginable. And uh, I, I'm a guy that loves a lot of different kind of basketball. If, you, if you've been around for a long time, you know that even when it was James Harden, Houston Rockets, dribble, 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 20 seconds, step back three, or hit a hit, get past my defender corner three, I enjoyed watching that style of offense mostly because it was different and the Warriors offense is different because it's so fluid and that's how you get the games where you have 17 turnovers because they be having trouble reading and reacting to what their teammates be doing but in this one I mean when it is working it's the most beautiful thing of all time bro it's legit every basketball fan's wet dream uh, which I'm, I'm being honest with you and dang they don't have the play-by-play -play up just yet I have a couple screenshots of times of plays every time I watched in this game I was like "Ooh, that was nice I screenshot at the timeline oh no I didn't because YouTube TV YouTube TV is trash and you cannot screen record and or screenshot. So I'm t I'm about to say show you the plays and I ain't got them because YouTube TV anytime you screenshot them it goes blank. That's such a L. What am I going to do with a screenshot? I understand screen recording because I can record a 22 minute episode of whatever. Um but screenshotting, bro, that's that's ridiculous. And now they got me looking for them and I don't even remember what they were. I think one of them was a, a pass by Klay Thompson. So let me go find Klay Thompson's assist. No, 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 no. Kevon Looney is actually the real deal. I know there's the meme about him being the next Kevin Durant when he was back in high school. Obviously, he's not that. His role has changed dramatically since back then. But, bro, he, he's just such an underrated play. Everything about him has become underrated. The passing. I mean, you've been playing in the Warriors system for the entirety of your NBA career. Things like this happen. This is one of the plays that made me say, Wow. You got Wiggins trying to ISO right here. Shout out to Jalen Brunson for helping Luka, who's not obviously not a great one-on-one -on -one defender. Pass Kevon Looney hands might not be the greatest, but look at that. Look at that. The decoy of Steph. Oh, my God. Look, this is what I mean. The decoy of Steph Curry. They tried to switch there, but Reggie Bullock is lost in the sauce, and now it's a layup for Klay Tom. One more time. One more time. Boom. Oh, my God. Come on. That's That's pure basketball in this game they were using Kevon Looney more in the pick and roll than Draymond Green and it just made Kevon Looney such a better passer and you saw some of that because they weren't really guarding Draymond out there which makes sense I mean if I'm coaching against the Warriors my my job is not to prevent Draymond from beating, beating us because if if Draymond beats you he deserves it put that to his resume um, but they just, they just did an amazing job that's all um, did I mention the name Jordan Poole yet I don't think I mentioned the name Jordan Poole at all um, but Jordan Poole, great. There was one play in the third quarter with one minute to go that I put in my notes. And the reason I have this clip right here is because I was thinking to myself, um, I don't even, I don't think that even though they won this game by double digits and it was a convincing win from the tip off that Steve Kerr is completely content with the way his team performed. And that might be saying something crazy because, well, you won by 20 in the first game of the, of the series. There were still a lot of mental lapses from the, um, the Warriors defense. And I think this is one of them that I kept in my mentions um, you can see right here. I don't even remember exactly what happened. So we live reacted to this one. Oh, here it is. This is this is what it was. So they're getting back on defense, right? And now when you get back on defense, you got to pick up and match up well, right? So you get a kick out to Jalen Brunson. Both of these players, Otto Porter and and uh Jordan Poole, are looking right at Jalen Brunson, but Jalen Brunson got the most telegraph looking on his face. He throwing that ball. You know where he throwing that ball. He looking right at Spencer Dimity, right in his eyeballs. But this is what happened. Nobody dumped down. 
Kevon Looney's telling Steph Curry to step up. Steph Curry's telling Otto Porter to step up. So, like, these are, like, mental lapses that probably shouldn't happen. And um, Spencer Dinwiddie had a very good game. He was one of the few people that showed up for the Dallas Mavericks today. But you cannot do this often in game two because I don't expect the Dallas Mavericks to shoot as bad as they did uh, tonight for the rest of the series. So that could have been Dorfany Smith who struggled today or Reggie Bullock who struggled, struggled today. So, you know, stuff like that. I'm sure they're going to look into in the, in the film room and get the communications back up so you don't get these open looks from good shooters. This game was fast AF. Also in my notes, literally in my notes, it says fast AF. Um, there were not a lot of, t of foul calls. And because of that, they let them boys play. I think the overall time was a little over two hours of gameplay or like overall TV time. Um, and that's counting what like commercials and halftime shows, which was cool. The pacing was good in this game. Um, could there have been more fouls called in the favor of Luka Doncic? Probably probably, but they was letting him play out there. There's that one play where Doran Finney-Smith got called for an offensive foul that I completely disagree with. But like I've mentioned in videos before, officiating is hard. They're not going to get it right 100% of the time. So I'm just cutting them some kind of slack in that sense. And, and this is what it's rough about the conference finals because what do I what do I talk about now? I guess the all rookie teams came out, but even that is like kind of nothing to talk about because nobody remembers all rookie teams. I saw Josh Giddy upset that he was on the second team. I understand why he's upset. He had a great season. I, I think he won rookie of the month every single month that he was healthy, um, but he wasn't healthy for basically the last month or so. And he dropped down to the second team, and Jalen Green went up. And then like the NBA stat nerds are like, how is uh, Herb Jones not on the first team? Only five people can make it. You know, it is what it is. Nobody's going to remember it at the end of the day. It doesn't even improve your overall resume when you retire and try to make it to the Hall of Fame. Ah, we can't let Josh get in because he was on the second team when he was an 18-year-old, not on the first team. So the rest of the stuff don't really matter. Um, but but no, I like that the players, when they're upset about it, because maybe that's the fuel for Josh Giddy to get in the lab and with him and the second overall pick and Shea and Lou Dort, and hopefully they can stay healthy and boom, they do a little something, something. I don't really know. Um, but that was released today. The only problem with us doing semi-daily videos like this um, is, is that the other things that happen revolving around the NBA that may not be on court kind of get overshadowed. We didn't even talk about like Patrick Beverly going on TV for 48 hours and just talking trash about um, Chris Paul. We didn't even get to talk about that. And I guess Danny Green responded to Patrick Beverly. And then now Patrick Beverly responded to Danny Gr Danny Green. NBA is a soap opera, and, and I'm on, I'm on, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Let me hear what Danny Green said about this all. You're a cone. When you play Luka, you're a cone too. How would you like that? Yeah. <laughs> is this yeah, recording? Is this recording? Is this recording? Is. Is this recording? Shout out to Danny Green, I guess. <laughs> Ah, oh, that's great. And what did Patrick Beverly say? NBA is a soap opera. I can get behind this. Once it start getting to, to the political thing, the epidemiology, that's where I draw the line. But if we just trash talk from NBA players, I'm here for this 100%. And Patrick Beverly responded saying what? Hey, when I tell you it took me 15 minutes, no exaggeration, to full screen in this tweet, here it is. Um, he tweeted at Danny Green and said, uh, health and wealth. And I, I swear Patrick Beverly is going to use this graphic until the end of his career and after I, he's tweeted it like five times in the last 48 out i mean I, I, I don't blame him you feel me that's elite company but but still he's he's using it a lot and danny green said all love bro not the personal we talking our our stuff keep doing you champ he kind of backtracked a little bit i'm not a fan of that all right that's that's enough of this i i've been normally i'll be using this keyboard from high ground but i recently got this new one and it's now a little bit different it's an attack on titan one this is just me me showcasing a new keyboard that I really like. Okay. All right. Bye.